makes filming on the streets an event for the neighborhood. It takes away a lot of the negative edge, too, for people that are doing wrong. Now the police and the community, everybody socializing, people that have problems with each other no longer have problems with each other. So what does it really take to get into the game? Let's find out what our panel has to say. Tafan Pop Dunn, he's the creator and co-writer of Project Heat. He is the founder of the Urban Web Series Awards. Yes, it's gotten so big, they have their own award show. Mm. Pop, great to have you with us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Also with us is Clayton Davis. He's the editor-in-chief and owner of awardcircuit.com. He's also a film and television critic. Clayton, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Also with us is Shakim Shah Hines. He's the CEO and creator of Home of the Hitters, and his website is home of the hit of streaming.com. Shaw, great to have you on the show. Thank you, pleasure. I, I really appreciate it. Pop, when you see the explosion and the award series and the you know the show, the award show that you guys put together, what do you think is the reason for all this? Well, actually, it's like with me being the creator of Project Heat and me knowing the, the ins and outs of creating the web series, it's a lot of dedication and hard work. So that's what made me actually create the um, the Urban Web Series Awards to show the appreciation and dedication. And show all the hard work that goes into it. Shai, you've been doing this since 2011. Yes, ma'am. Now for like about seven years. Yes, ma'am. And you have one of the most popular series that's out there, the authenticity, it's expanding. Tell us about that. What gave you the idea to get into it in the first place? Wow. <clears throat> to make a long story short, um, uh, I was incarcerated. And they used to show The Wire. Um, when we used to go to the movie theater and they would never let us see the whole one because they would wait till everybody come and then they would show the actual movie and um, I used to watch how they used to have the young brothers from Baltimore I mean um, and his rawest element and actually telling their stories and uh, we didn't have that in New York at the time and I said if it's the last thing I do I'm going to do something like that, and it's been working. So it was actually The Wire. You're, you're looking at the episodes of The Wire and going, that's Baltimore. Of course, the housing looked different. Yeah, the whole, the, yeah. Some of the issues were very much the same, but it was just on a different scale. Yeah, but when, when you think about it, if you think about the places where we come from, uh, East New York, uh, Far Rockaway, Esmer Houses, Flatbush, Church and Ocean, um, the housings are maybe different, but the people are the same. Clayton, in terms of when you hear Shah say he was inspired by The Wire, which was a great classic on so many different levels, but really groundbreaking, what do you think about that? Uh, I mean, that's the whole explosion of this whole web series movement. It is an opportunity for the stories that aren't being told on network and, and cable television to be told now from the people that are in, entrenched in, the, in those cultures. And it gives opportunity to everyone to now have their voice heard and to speak to the world in a way they may not have ever been afforded to before. What about in terms of the popularity? Because they're getting like like cable TV, some of these reality shows, if they get two million viewers, they think they're doing a great job. Some of the episodes that the, for these the, uh, these shows or these series are like four or five, six million viewers. Yeah, I mean, streaming services are just blowing up in, in, in general. Netflix is right now dominating the scene. And right now with the streaming services, they are affording opportunity for the bottom lines of big networks like HBO to save money on throw money down on a pilot that they may not have normally been able to otherwise. So now we have HBO picking up something like Insecure, FX picking up Broad City. All these shows are being picked up now, and BET just picked up their first ever web series now, bringing t uh, to their uh, channel. It gives an opportunity for everyone to just save a little bit of money, see if this works, and they're coming in already with a built-in audience. Right, they're bringing, the, they're bringing the fans to them, and then they don't have to go through, like you said, that development period, and put in hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to develop the series themselves. But Pop, when you started, when you and your partner started, what did you, how did you, how did you figure out how to do it? I mean, because oh, even like TV news reporting and <laughs> doing a show, it's, it's a learning process. You know, you kind of have to build up to it. Well, actually, me and my partner, Katie and Sha, we created a, a film company called Show Up Films. And we, we, um, we, we actually filmed our first full feature movie called Tycoon Devices to Distinguish. So, we did that without any actors going to classes, without Katie and Sha picking up the camp, even going to school for that. They never went to school for that. So we just did it, and it, it got a little buzz. But with me creating Project Heat, it was actually people that wanted to write books about my, my life. But I turned them down, and then after we finished the, um, the Tycoon, we was in the search of 
another project, and that's how I came with Project Heat. So you can and, and you you grew up in the Pink Houses, yes, which is a NYCHA development in Brooklyn. Yes. So that's where you got started, and you went back there, and that's that's where you the series started. Yes, it, it's actually a lot of stuff that I read. You know, read. I say stuff that happened to me, and a lot of other people that had um that lived in the projects that's not there to tell a story or they in jail for a long time. So I did the reenactment of a lot of stuff and a lot of stuff like me getting shot, I've been shot twice, once in my face and once in my neck. And I did the reenactment of that, but I didn't do it. My sister that plays the character Lady, she the one that actually got shot in one of the episodes. So you use some of the real life, real life occurrences. Yes as inspiration for the story. Shah, this is the question that people ask all the time because when you see, you look at these series, and you're like, they're not really acting. Those guys really are out on the streets like that. What do you say to that? Um, True or false? Or I'll take I the would like, I would like to say um, <laughs> that <clears throat> the filming aspect, straight entertainment. Um, the actors who are in it, uh, their real life um, and that's the beauty of, of doing a web series um, you can take an idea now I'm, I'm grown but you have a lot of the little young guys that's on the corner what I'm saying is that if I can go to them and reach out to them and have them think differently plant the seed and now you have this same young guy that's running around robbing people now he's looking forward to filming now he's thinking about damn well I can't go to jail because I know they're getting ready to blow so I said all of that to say uh, this platform, the platform you provided, I mean, without you, it wouldn't be possible. So yes, we are real people, like myself. I did 17 and a half years in prison. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in behavior science. I have a master's degree in professional studies. And I do my own filming. I do my own lights. I do my own audio. I built my own streaming site. Um, at the end of the day, we're not waiting for Hollywood. If I can get 20,000 subscribers to my streaming site, 20,000 times 10 is what? 20,000. A lot. I want to talk, I want to talk, I'll talk about the streaming. But, but Clay, what about, so, are they kind of... I know, it totally, real. and we're going to talk about the business aspect, but I just want to get Clayton's take on what you said about they're, they're not waiting for Hollywood. Is this kind of changing the whole business, the way digital, you know, the whole digital revolution changed kind of the music industry? Yeah, there are two points to that. First, what, what he's speaking about in particular has to do with education. Uh, we in, in the urban community are not afforded the opportunity to, all we know is about being in front of the camera, right? I want to be a big star like Denzel Washington, but they don't know they could be the next Bradford Young uh, cinematographer, the first black cinematographer nominated for an Academy Award last year for shooting a rival. They don't know that they can be the next Joy McMillan who edited the Oscar winning Moonlight that won Best Picture last year. We don't see that because we, we're not we're not exposed to those opportunities. So now with the digital platform, it gives people an opportunity to get in behind a camera or get to become a sound mixer or you know be a costume designer be all these different things that they never would have seen otherwise other than what's been shown to them on their local televisions in house or worse yet when they're in prison so it's expanding them culturally 100 percent. 100 percent. all right this is street soldiers <laughs> i'm your host lisa evers we'll be back right after this what hollywood is quickly learning and it's glad they're finally learning it that the black experience isn't just about gangs and the streets In terms of the storylines, let's talk about that for a minute because Hollywood writers get a lot of money for to write scripts for TV series, even the, some of the so-called reality shows are scripted or the scripted reality shows, these hybrids now. Where do you get the storylines? Uh, the storylines come from uh, various places. Um, growing up in, in NYCHA, <clears throat> Uh, poverty. Uh, you see a lot of things. Uh, a lot of things you go through in life. Um, so we sit down and we brainstorm some of the things that we've gone through, some of the things that we've seen our friends go through, and we build off of those things. Of course, we change names and things of that nature, but we're privy to a lot of things that most of America isn't. So that's where we actually get most of our storylines from. But unlike Pop, who writes, we do all of ours improv. So it's a little more difficult because you have to be able to think on your feet. However, we'll take time. We'll break it into blocks. Whereas if someone couldn't memorize a paragraph, we'll do a sentence. 
Get that? We'll change the camera angle. Get this next block. Change the camera angle. Get this next block. And when I put it together, you'll never tell that it was just three words, two words, one word. This kind of thing here. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the way we put some of our stories together. It works. Pop, in in terms of in terms of you do you use scripts uh, or do you use like season, outlines or how did you guys how did you guys deal with that whole issue the um the first season I actually wrote I wrote it out but the second and third season we did a, everything was improv and we just like give the actors pointers to say and they just intertwine that with a little freestyle and make it more authentic you get what I'm saying so with that being said it's kind of hard just to freestyle and and keep like the pointers, the, the one that you got, the main pointers that you have to say. Without going left somewhere or right there. or... And you got to make sure you, like, if you do two or three takes, it's the same way. The continuity the continuity should be on point at all times. If you same have way. a hat on, you can't have the hat yeah. off in the next one. Right, or a different outfit over. or different right. jacket you or whatever. Sure. Clay, Clay, what about these the, the storylines? Because, I mean, if, if we're looking at a bigger, if we're looking at the bigger picture here, some of the biggest movies, America's always loved gangsters of various uh, generations or various cultures, you know, the shootouts, uh, all that kind of stuff. What do, you, what do you think about that? Yeah, well, well, I think naturally, especially in, in Hollywood, what they have been drawn to is the black experience, right? Or w where has been shown as of recent. Movies like Boys in the Hood, John Singleton gets a Best Director nomination because it speaks to the black experience. Precious, um, 12 Years a Slave wins Best Picture. Where I think we're moving towards, though, and I think Sterling K. Brown talked about this when he won the Golden Globe a few weeks back. He said, I'm looking forward to the point where I'm going to be cast as a role that doesn't call for a black man. It just calls for a Man. man and we're able to just put a black man in a role where the where the the significance of my race doesn't matter where it's not written in yeah. as a black man. and i think that's where the stories are going and, and it's very important that the urban digital market where they are talking to their experience they're what I think people are looking for is the story that transcends all genres, all different types of people that they can connect to all these different types of stories. That's why Moonlight is so uh, successful. It wasn't just about the black experience. It was about growing up, uh, coming of age story, being gay, uh, having a drug addicted mother. While the black experience was present, it wasn't all about that. Well, this is Street Soldiers. I'm your host, Lisa Evers. We'll be back right after this. Pop, in terms, of, are you able to make money with Project Heat? How do you make money off it? Right now, we was we was depending on YouTube, but we no. we ain't doing that no more because if you do the knowledge about YouTube, YouTube is not a good site to even get try to get paid from when you monetize your uh your project. But now we we in the mix of, you know, we got a couple of deals on the table that's throwing us some some money. So we we in negotiation right now. Six figures. Yeah. Beautiful. Six figures. All Six right, figures. great. Beautiful. And you still owning part of it, or yes, we own creative everything. Control? Every, everything or anything like that. Cla claim <laughs> what, when you hear these business models. <laughs> give us your expert opinion on this, please. I mean, there's two. There's two easy avenues to go down. Obviously, advertising is going to be the number one uh, thing that people are going to be drawn to, and that's, what, that's, that's, what, that's what makes you uh, money. Also, it's going to be paid subs subscriptions, right? Netflix invented the model, right? Uh, there's a show. Uh, br brown and sexy, uh, I'm sorry, broken sexy. That's on Black and Sexy TV. They charge six ninety nine a month for their web series. Uh, you know, six ninety nine times thirty thousand a month. <laughs> that's bringing <laughs> in making some, money. Uh, some some decent revenue. But I think more so than that. Um, the, the content that's there has to be desirable. And I think what Hollywood is quickly learning, and it's glad they're finally learning it, that the black experience isn't just about gangs and the streets. Uh, there's a show, Brown Girls, that's about to go to HBO, that's about two queer women growing up uh, and coming to terms with their sexuality. There's more to the black experience than just like growing up poor. Mm -hmm. You know, we can have a conversation about you know, I need to make money to to feed my family, but I have a pretty decent job. Or Issa Rae tells a story about like, hey, I'm just a girl trying to figure it out. You know, right. those are those are things that are accessible. Like a lot of other girls. Yeah, like, like, we all try to figure it, out, yeah. right, exactly. figure it out. I got you. But, but in um, Sean, in terms of the in terms of the streaming though, and the money and setting up the bank accounts and all that kind of stuff, what about that? Um, are, are you afraid you're going to go too legit that you're going to lose that street edge? No, because as long as they have street people that need help. 
we will continue to stay grounded. The, the bottom line is, um, you know, we think of Hollywood. We think of cable. We think of all these things. Um, they don't understand our experience. They don't understand that you have little guys out here who would rather put a gun in their hand than put a book in their hand. So, so, so my thing is this. As long as we can provide an avenue for somebody to look at me or look at Pop and be like, yo, you see that Bentley GT? He ain't sell drugs for that. You see that mansion he got in Westchester County? He ain't sell drugs for that. And then Facebook Live, when I have my whole cast at the car dealer and we gonna get homes, that's inspiring. Mm-hmm. All right, Clayton. In terms of, do you, do you see them? Do you see? You already said some of the major networks are looking to these web series yeah. as kind of, you know, like the uh, NBA's D League. It's like yeah. we're, this is we're looking for the next big hot <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. hot thing that's going to come six in six figures. Yeah. That's going to that's going to win us the win us the championship or help us win the championship. But do you do you think there's this is a a fad or do you think this is a trend or is this part of it because of the technology that's available now? No, I think I think this is where we're headed where we, we are living in a digital media age and it's only getting deeper in I think now um, it's becoming a business model that they're going to adopt more because they're gonna say we can save so much money on just letting them try to figure it out uh, where it becomes attractive for people to do digital series is that creative control where the problem lies is that when HBO gets your hands on it then you have to relinquish some of that mm-hmm. control and then the story becomes Water different. Down. Than, than, than what was being told. And that's a sacrifice people have to make or that they're seeing if they're willing to make that sacrifice. But then there are some people that they, they still get that control walking through the door. But there's oh, when, when money gets involved, then more voices come to the table. And that's where the conversation is going to go um, as more and more people start throwing their hats in the ring of digital content. <laughs> You feel like this is, this this is kind of like this is this is a legal hustle. Legal, and Le- it's got so taxes. many other layers to it. I mean, it's endlessly. It's it's really endless. The same way Vegas was built, the same way Hollywood was built, the same way the black exploitation films of the sixties was built. Curtis Mayfield grandkids is still eating off that. Wow. And we're trying to build that ourselves. All right. On that note, I want to thank all of you for being with us uh, for this episode of Street Soldiers. Tafan Pop, uh, Tafan Pop Dunn, creator and co-writer of Project Heat, founder of the Urban Web Series Awards. Thank you so much for being with us. Pleasure. Clayton Davis, editor-in-chief and owner of awardcircuit.com and film and television critic. Clayton, thank you so much for being with us. For also with us, Shakim Hines, CEO and creator of Home of the Hitters and Home of the Hitters Streaming.com. Thank you so much. Thank you all for being with us for this really great episode. I appreciate it. Thank Thank you. you, Lisa. Thank you. And remember, use your mind. It's your best weapon. I hope it's your only weapon. I'm Lisa Evers. Let's push for peace.